Hi, this is John Fallows, V6EY, with a short video about my DIY loop rotator. <laughs> so, uh, what's a loop rotator and why did I build one? That's uh, good questions. Let's find out why. So, my inspiration was uh, the idea that uh, lots of hams are now using more and more uh, magnetic loop antennas, and many of them are attaching rotators. And the rotator for a loop antenna makes a lot of sense because the null from the broadside is very sharp and you can turn that towards interference and, and reduce its level significantly. You can buy a small antenna rotator like the one shown here for around $200 uh, online. I thought it might be fun to build one from scratch. I got a lot of inspiration from an organization called SATNOGS, which is an open source global network of satellite ground stations. If you go to their website, and particularly their wiki, you can find lots of ideas for building small antenna rotators. And uh, these gave me inspiration about making one using maker tools like my 3D printer uh, to uh, put it all together. Uh, and some of these folks use stepper motors, others use DC motors. With enough torque, either one will work just fine. So my conceptual design began actually a few years ago and I bought all the parts and they've been sitting in a box and I finally decided to put this thing together. So the idea was to build a rotator box would would attach to a small mast and the mast would be about three feet above ground and uh, the loop would sit on top of the rotator box and this will work with either a small one meter active antenna loop or a uh, small uh, transmitting loop. Uh, either way, I designed it to do both jobs. The idea was to put bearings uh, attached to the top and bottom plates of the box and then use uh, a motor and some timing belts and gears to turn the rotator box against the mast and uh, track its position with a 10 turn potentiometer uh, which would let you know where the, the box is, is pointing and everything would be controlled over Wi-Fi using a Node MCU. Uh, Node MCU is like an Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi. And uh, basically, if you take this design forwards, then your rotator will show up as uh, another uh, server on your local area network around the house. So I began by looking for the bearings, and I found a whole bunch of different Lazy Susan bearings. Um, and these are quite strong, actually. Uh, I found a four-inch one because the center hole was enough for a one-and-a-half-inch piece of ABS pipe, which was going to be my mast. Um, and these contain uh, a few dozen tiny ball bearings and a track, and uh, they can hold 300 pounds, which is way more than I need. And uh, basically, very easy to attach to a plastic box or attached to a ABS mask using a 3D printed collar, which I'll show you in just a moment. For DC motors, you'll also find lots of these on uh, online for around $8, typically 3 RPM, 5 RPM. Uh, they're highly geared, they have enough torque, and uh, like a stepper motor, when there's no power applied, the gearing sort of locks uh, the rotator in place. This will not uh, spin on its axis unless the motor is actually turning the gears. So beyond this point, uh, I needed some metal pulleys for the motor and potentiometer attachments. I needed some plastic geared pulleys uh, to 3D print for the mast and some continuous G2 belts, uh, GT2 belts to uh, transfer turning power from the motor to the mast. For control, I put together this uh, controller module. Uh, on the left uh, lower, you can see the Node MCU sitting inside a motor control shield. And this motor control shield uh, provides uh, the 12 volt uh, pulse width modulation to the motor for turning it forwards or backwards. On the right hand side is the ULN 2003 stepper motor controller with a small uh, stepper motor. And uh, lower right, you'll see uh, um, a voltage regulator. Uh, so basically, I plug 12 volts into this control board, and I use the 12 volts for the motor and the uh, 5 volts for the Node MCU and the stepper. And uh, that's the basic design. And 
all of these modules are mounted onto a 3D printed uh, sort of baseboard, which I can attach inside the rotator, and on top is a bunch of terminal strip uh, connections for just doing the wiring. Really simple, really easy to put together. So here's I started building. I uh, the base is around eight inches by six inches, and. Uh, so I began by 3D printing the base in the gray filament at the bottom, uh, and I'm using uh, threaded rods, uh, steel threaded rods, to hold uh, the box together. One of the challenges I came across is how do you build something inside a box? <laughs> and I realized that was very hard to do, but I, I figured, okay, I'm just going to build around the top and bottom plates, use the threaded rods to hold the box together, and then I can put the sides on later once I have the whole thing built. So you can see on the left is the uh, support module for the potentiometer and the DC motor. And uh, the module is built in such a way that the motor and potentiometer can be moved back and forth slightly so I can tighten up the belts after I attach them. On the right hand side is the control module and uh, and then in the middle you see the uh, lazy susan bearing with a plastic collar attached to it and that plastic collar will later be used to attach firmly this box to uh, an abs mast made of one and a half inch uh, pipe here's partial assembly with the uh, 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 middle plate being screwed into place. Now I'm designing this so that it can either be a box for rotating an active loop with just these two plates or I can attach uh, another gear on top for turning a capacitor uh, with the stepper motor if I want to build a small uh, transmitting loop. So there's the basic design coming together and the pieces are coming together all of the structural parts except for the steel rods and the small hardware, the, the screws, um, are made from plastic. Here's the final view, looked, uh, final build looked at from the rear. You can see those um, uh, 3D printed pulleys attached to both the motor and the uh, potentiometer with the continuous loop GT belt. Um, and you can use some online calculators to figure out the pulley and timing belt dimensions. And it's really easy to attach the uh, pulleys onto the mast at the direct uh, exact location. You just move them up and down and then screw them down uh, to hold them in place. From the front you can see uh, the uh, rotator now ready for a smoke test. Uh, you can see all the tiny bearings inside the top, top Lazy Susan. Everything's all hooked up and tightened down. This whole rotator costs around $40 if all the parts are bought uh, new online or at local hardware stores. And that includes the PETG filament for printing the parts. For re remote control, I just build a very simple ASCII command processor. I just send the uh, commands back and forth for turning control on and off, triggering status reports, uh, running the motor up, down, stopping it, seeking a specific position on the motor, uh, reading the motor position, setting the end stop so it just rotates 180 degrees, and then all of that information can be saved into an EEPROM. The um, rotator shows up on my local area network, and I'm right now just using a simple TCP socket to send commands and receive status information. So there's lots of talk about uh, how it works. Let's take a look at a demonstration um, I'm going to bring up the uh, rotation video, if I can get it to work. Here we are. So um, I, I will tell you something about this video. Unfortunately, I'm just using a re remote surveillance camera to show the, uh, uh, the thing, and there's about four seconds worth of latency uh, with the video coming through. But you can see me sending commands. You can see status information coming back. I've given the command for the motor to turn up, and it will now move uh, clockwise until it hits the end stop. There it goes. And it will uh, stop when it gets to the end stop, which is set of the motor uh, potentiometer reading of, I think, around 700 
uh, yeah, so it's going to stop right away. And then I'll send the motor down command, and uh, motor down will move it counterclockwise, and it'll keep turning till it gets to 400. So the potentiometer is set up, uh, plugged into the analog to digital converter on the Node MCU, and then it translates position based on the uh, the voltage sho showing up in the ADC uh, from the potentiometer. It's all pretty simple. Uh, um, like I say, about forty dollars to build, and uh, this will work outside or inside wherever you want it to work. And uh, you can also send the seek command. Shortly, I'll send MK equals five fifty, which will then move this back to its center position. Like I say, there's about four seconds of latency from that camera, which is sitting down in my workshop. Uh, while I'm controlling uh, this remotely over the uh, web socket using ASCII commands. And uh, it's that simple. Uh, it looks a bit warped. Oh, you can see my worm gear at the top. That'll be used later on. I'll talk more about it in another video uh, for controlling the, um, controlling the capacitor for uh, a small transmitting loop. So, having uh, given this demonstration, uh, you can build one of these yourself. It's pretty easy and uh, lots of fun. And uh, join me again on Making It Up for uh, more stories and information about building strange things with a 3D printer.